Double stops in the bass? Are you kidding me? What's going on is Jason Heath and double stops tend to be one of the trickier concepts for beginners on the bass. I've struggled for years with finding a good way to teach double stops. I think I finally come up with something that works. So in this video, I'm going to share why it's important to practice double stops, how easy it is to get overwhelmed by them, and some of the best exercises for getting comfortable with them. First off, why double stops are so important to practice. I remember having a conversation a few years ago with Gary Carr about how he started every day practicing double stops. This is something that all string players seem to do, and I kind of think of it like wearing ankle weights and wrist weights. When you take them off, it's so much easier to move around. If you can play double stops with good tone and good intonation, that will transfer over to single notes and it will accelerate your learning like crazy. Second off, it's quite easy to get overwhelmed with double stops, and part Part of it is because it's kind of like a moving target. You've got so many more things to think about. You've got two strings. You're trying to get them both to speak equally or in balance. You've got two different notes. Which one is out of tune? You don't know. It's easy to get frustrated. I think a lot of people dive in too deep, too quick with double stops. They get discouraged. And I think I'm a big fan of the following sequence I'm going to show you because it's kind of like training wheels for double stops. Before we hop into the exercises, I want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Modacity, which has been my practice app of choice for the past three years. Modacity is a new way to practice with a whole suite of tools at your fingertips, and they get you thinking about mindful practice in a really cool way. Track your recordings, track your progress. There are several people in the bass community that have found out about Modacity and have won jobs, have bettered their playing. Check it out and get a special deal on lifetime subscription membership at modacity.co slash cbc. All right, let's take a look at some of my favorite exercises, and you can download the PDF and follow along. Just check out the link in the description below. All right, we're gonna start out with octaves. And I have found the best way to get going with double stop octaves is to play open D and to play this harmonic right here on the G string and just play them together. That lets you focus on the D string and really getting the D string ringing. And then just touching this harmonic is usually fairly easy for folks. Also, starting up here in the neck block, I find really helpful because it gives you a little shelf. The notes are a little bit closer together. The string is a little bit more spongy, maybe is the word. It has a little bit more give to it. And so I just find that to be a very user-friendly spot to start. After that, I like to have folks alternate the open string and the harmonic and then putting the first finger down to close the note. So we go like this. Then. It's a great way to test if you're really on the note or you're a little sharp, like I was, or flat. A uh, wonderful way to just get started. And then I just do the same thing on all the pairs of strings. We go over to the A and D string. And you'll notice you need to sink more weight in to get this working, especially when we go to the bottom two strings. move briskly through these, but any one of these exercises, you could stay on for days or even weeks until you're comfortable. They all are sequential, so you just get one and then you can move on to the other. After octaves, I like to practice fifths, and I have four exercises for fifths. The first one is using the open G string and the D harmonic here, and I touch this with my third finger. I have my thumb resting on the side of the neck, and I just play those together. That one out, but I checked with my couple of students and they liked it. They thought it was useful. And you know, for so many bass concertos and such and other bass pieces, you need to play that harmonic set with the open string. And so I think it's a good exercise to practice and sounds cool too. So we do the same thing, move over to the middle two strings, make sure there's enough weight into the string, and over to the A and E string. You're really going to hear your bass ringing and just get nice full sound. As my friend Dennis Whitaker likes to say, make the strings go fat. Next up, I take folks down to first position and we're going to actually start playing some closed notes down here. And I just like to play fifths down here. So I find the A and the D. 
it's amazing how tricky it is to really get this in tune. And you'd, you'd think, oh, I can play this in tune right here, but moving down here, this is just a little bit stiffer in terms of where you are on the fingerboard versus here where it's a little bit spongier. And your arm is in a different position, so it actually takes a remarkable uh, bit of getting used to for folks when they're starting out with double stops. <laughs> It's also a balancing act between deciding how much weight to put into the low string versus the high string. Even if you're in tune, you can be out of tone, I like to call it. That's what wind players talk about. You could be in tune, but your tone's off. So getting that balance is really tricky, uh, especially at first. Once you get it, it's second nature, but I do find that it takes some getting used to for folks. A great way to practice that is to separate the two notes. You can just play D and A then together. And that's true for any of these exercises. Then we take that and we go across the strings, do the same thing for the middle two strings. And the lower two. And you can sequence them differently. You can go from low to high. You can play them as long as you want. You can jump around, just take the exercise and use your imagination. Next, I like to take folks up back to this neck block position and we're gonna play two closed notes. And this is where things can start to get tricky because you can start to drift around and not be sure which note is right and which note needs to be adjusted. So what I like to do is to find this A and I check harmonic. Make sure that's correct. Then, I base the top note off of that. So I got my foundation set and then I base the top note. I have two, three, and four on the string and I got one down on the lower string. And I'm just listening for the purity of that fifth. Then we go over to the middle two strings. This can get a little bit more challenging for folks. You're going to feel that there's just more string pressure, so you just have to make sure that the weight is being used correctly in your hand, and we could go way into that in a future video. And, by the way, when you cross strings, there's a natural tendency for your hand to go a bit flat, so you almost feel like you're going a little bit sharp, especially by the time you get down to the A and E string. And that one... in tune, that tends to be a pretty wolfy spot on the bass that certainly is not the most beautiful sound my bass can make. So it's something you work with. And again, if you're new to these, that last one I think of as totally optional. All of these are optional, but you could even just start with this. Get comfortable with that and then transfer the learning over the other strings when you have the chops. Last for fifths, I take folks down to first position do the exact same thing. The reason I do this one first and then move down here is again, it's because the notes are a little bit easier to bring to the fingerboard. There is less spacing here and you got this great neck block. So this one can take a little bit of getting used to. The hand is more open here. Again, break the notes apart. You can check that E against the open A. Somewhere in there. <laughs> and then break them break him apart. Then play the double stop. Take them to the middle strings. Again, typically the most challenging, the lower strings. But boy, if you get those lower strings under control, this is like butter playing these upper strings. The last thing I do for beginner double stops is thirds. I save these for last, but we probably use thirds the most in string playing, so it's important to get a handle on them. I start with major thirds at the neck block right here, and we're going to play D and B flat. Now. I like to find one of the notes first so I'm not just quick sanding around on these notes. So the D, there's a harmonic you can check. And then find B flat. And it's important to use your ears on all of these, but the thirds, there's a little bit more variability in how they sound, so really get used to. How you want your major third tuned. We could again, future video, go way into that. But just get something that sounds good, use a tuner, whatever floats your boat. And what I like to do then is find a minor third. So again, we've got D and we've got B. By the way, there is a harmonic under that B. It's not the note B, but there is a harmonic if you want to check. And you can chill out on just the B flat and the D. Take a break, two, three, and. 
then try the minor third. Did I say that right? Major third, minor third. Sorry if I got that wrong. But that's a great exercise. I find that exercise helpful. You can absolutely take them across all the string pairs. I just wrote out on the G and D string because once you get the concept, you can kind of apply it. Also, because there's a little bit more going on with thirds, I think it's good to just simplify and stick to the top two strings to start off with. But once you get it, move it to the other strings for sure. Once you get that under control, I like to go down to first position and do the exact same thing. So we're going to play A and F natural. And then F sharp. We can check those many different ways. A. We can check it against our open D or just play open A. F natural. We can check just by listening against the A. F sharp. There's a harmonic. So many different ways to check these. And again, take them with the other strings whenever you like or just chill out on the top two strings. Either way is fine. Next, I like to start connecting. And that is where double stops can get even more challenging for folks. It's one thing to stay in position and do them. It's another thing once you start actually moving around the bass. So I like to break them into two chunks. I like to start down here and do major thirds. And what I do is I start on the A and the F. And I go up to B and G. And for these thirds, I think of my first finger as a guide note. So I'm at A, now I go to B. And second finger is just along for the ride. Again, use a tuner, that helps a lot. Break the notes apart. Practice them individually. Then second finger. Lots of good ways to practice them. Then I start from up here, doing the minor third, so one, four, and I go down to C and A. Again, practice them however you like. You can play them indefinitely, just on repeat. Then when you're ready. There's a tendency to put a space in there, what I call a thinking pause. I hear a lot of people go. That can be fine at first. I might do it very intentionally at first if you want to put a pause. Stop, move, think, play. As you work on it though, you want to develop fluency. So getting comfortable with not putting a pause. And again, practicing that guide note, that first finger. And thinking of that as the note that leads everything, that can be helpful, playing them individually, all that good stuff. Finally, I take all those thirds and string them together into one exercise. So we start down here and we go. octaves, fifths, and thirds down, you are well on your way to becoming a fluent double stop player on the bass. That's a look at double stops on the bass. If you want to get more into left hand technique, check out this video on the thumb transition zone, that notoriously challenging part of the bass. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.